It's 99.9 KISW Metal Shop. Right now, we are on the phone with a uh, man you might know. You might not know personally, but I'm sure you've seen him on stage a dozen times. Phil Anselmo, Pantera, Down, Super Joint Ritual, a handful of other bands. How you doing today, Phil? Doing really, 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 really good, Kevin. Awesome to hear, man. Uh, now, okay, I'm going to start it off with kind of an odd question, but the first time I ever heard of bands like Dark Throne, of bands like uh, St. Vitus, was seeing them uh, on your shirt on stage with Pantera. What Thank sh- you. What shirt are you wearing today, Phil? Right now, I'm wearing a fucking soaking wet pony killer shirt just because I got through boxing eight rounds outside in the fucking 80 plus degree plus fucking humidity weather of Louisiana so Jesus there you go that's awesome man pony killer of course uh, on your record label yeah very different type of band so if you know they're, they're definitely not trying to be the heaviest band in the world they're more of a ugly ugly pop type band rock band band, rock band, uh, you know, uh, very tough to explain, very hard to pigeonhole right there. I hear you, man. Uh, now, I follow Kirk on Facebook and on Twitter and things like that. He's mentioned a little about the recording sessions for the news down record. Uh, oh. can, can you tell me a little bit about this, and, and will it be a full length or an EP or, or what? It's an EP, and it's it's but it's a, it's a nice long EP. It's six songs, and uh, to me, in my opinion, especially at the end of the day, well, I think we got the final, 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 Master Dunn finished version earlier uh, last week or later last week to me it sounds like classic down man it, nice. it really uh, no frills no bullshit stripped down straight to the point down music and I've had you know a handful of friends that have tried to have compare it and honestly all they come up with is this is the closest record that you've done to the first record in a long time awesome so, you know, I, I know a lot of people will be happy to hear that. So, you know, I, honestly, I'm, I'm happy with it, man. It turned out good. Nice. Uh, so do you think that in the future there will ever be another super joint ritual record? Never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever blanket from your mind. It's laid to rest, huh? Yeah, no more drug core for the kid. Fair enough, fair enough. Going into uh, a little bit talking about uh, Vulgar Display, this year marks the 20th anniversary of Vulgar Display of Power. What do you remember most about the recording sessions from that record? Honestly, getting in and kicking ass, man, for real. It was probably the most focused we had ever really, really, really been. We were in this state of mind. Uh, at that, you know, at that point, man, we were we were so focused. It was like I can only compare it to the great Roberto Duran when he was focused and came into a fight, knew exactly what the game plan was. Manos de piedras, hands of stone. We laid that motherfucker down, yeah, furiously and 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 with conviction. So to me, it was a home run from day one. You know, it was like fucking uh, first round knockout from day one. It was like a new level of confidence, right? And power. That's awesome. Now, uh, the song Piss was recently released as a lost B-side from the Vulgar Sessions. It's got like kind of the riff from Use My Third Arm. Uh, why was it included in the album? Well, because I, honestly, the, the main riff to it didn't really jive with me. Uh, I didn't think it fit the rest of the record. It kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. It wasn't as developed as the other songs. So, you know, I had to make a judgmental call there. So, you know, f***ing it didn't go on the record. But, you know, hey, it's very interesting that Pantera has any lanyap at all. Because we were not that kind of band. We, 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 uh, we didn't spare much ammunition, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I feel that. And uh, how does it feel 20 years later to be all over the radio with a, a quote-unquote new single? Unreal. Like, <laughs> wow. It's like, man, you know, Jesus Christ. We, uh, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. we got the greatest f***ing fans in the f***ing world, man. And, and that's the truth. From the bottom of my heart. Absolutely. Now, uh, just real quick, if you had to sum up your time in Pantera in one word, what would it be? Oof. Life changing. Is that that's two words? Well, it, you know, you can uh, abbreviate it. Well, you one. can put a dash there. Exactly. Life changing, life altering. You know. Uh, Something like that. Well, uh, House Core Records started a few years ago. It's it's like your baby. Uh, tell us a little bit about House Core Records. Is there like a philosophy or goal behind your personal label? You know, I'm not a big roster guy, so I'm not just going to sign a bunch of bands for the sake of having them. Uh, I, I like to take time. I like to develop bands. I like to work with my guys. And I like uh, the camaraderie, man, and the, and the, and the uh, brotherhood, sisterhood, no matter what. You know, whoever I'm working with, I love the uh, variety. It's not just a heavy metal, hardcore label. It's not just 
uh, you know, put it this way, extreme music comes in all genres, mm-hmm. no matter what the f*** it is. There is an extreme band in every single f***ing genre you can really point at. So I'm interested in those kind of bands, you know? Uh, to make it just, you know, straight to the point, I don't want bands that sound like any other bands I've been in before, if you catch me. No, I, I feel that. I, I'm looking for the bands that hit a different note, the band that is looking for the different hidden note, the bands that are hitting the fucking hidden notes because as a musician I refuse to believe that all the notes have been hit. I feel that. Uh, so, well, watching interviews with you back in the day and, and even now you, you're you always so enthusiastic about underground and new bands you've discovered. Uh, do you still actively seek out new underground music and, and what are some bands we should check out? Oh my God, well, it all depends. You know, they, there's not new bands, so to speak, really, but right now I'm really loving the f- out of what Australia is putting out there. Like, Portal really destroys. For death metal, Portal is just fucking uh, out. They're insane. They're totally. fucking completely insane. I like the first, and you hear me, the first Cauldron Black Ram record. Oh my God. Fucking Black Death, fucking heavy as fuck. And God damn it. I'm also on a Destroyer 666 trip, man. Nice. An endless stream of bombers. Oh, my God. Off of the, the version of endless stream of bombers, off of violence is the prince of this world. So I got to give that shout out right there. And everybody knows that I fucking, the, 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 the Swedish scene is kicking ass too right now with Ghost and In Solitude and oh, all yeah. that stuff. You know, so uh, right now, I mean, you know, I've, I've kind of gone through that phase. I still love them. I love them as people. They're great guys. But right now, I, c- I can't help it. Portal is fucking splitting my brain in half, and I love them. All right, well, we're going to have to play a little bit more Portal here on Metal Shop then. Good luck, man. Put on Glummer Phonal. Okay, sounds good, Glummer man. Glummer Phonal. Look it up. Will do. Coming from a both a musician and now a record label's founder's perspective, how do you feel about music downloading and, and file sharing and how it's changed the industry? Well, you know, it's going to do what it does. You know, I can't say I love it or that or, you know, whatnot. I, I do I dislike it? Maybe so. You know, sure. There's things I dislike about it. Have I downloaded things? Yes, I have. So I'm part of it. You know, and so I, I guess I'm not going to call it a problem. It's just the way things are. However, you can take that, and you can always take the way things are mm-hmm. and make it work for you. And and I, I, if I had an hour, I could go into how. You can make it work for you, but people have already started doing it with the use of YouTube and self-promotion and obviously this Twitter thing that people do all the f***ing time. <laughs> you know, it really, you know, it's like, it's like a, go, a way for uh, people can, you know, basically receive a personal message from one of their favorite artists or whatnot, yeah. uh, act, actors or actresses or famous people all over the f***ing world. But, you know, I'm not a tweeter. Dang. I am a f***ing, you know, I'm, I'm uh, still kind of a Neanderthal when it comes to that. But you know what? I'm not going to throw stones like the Neanderthals would. Okay. I'm an educated Neanderthal. Fair enough, man. Okay, well, uh, the last question we really have for you today, Phil, is uh, if, if you could pick a scar on your body and tell us the story of how you got it, Phil. Ooh, man. Well, I got this gigantic tattoo across my stomach that says unscarred. And yeah. I guess that's probably the most ironic fucking scar I could possibly ever have. You know, tattoos, you know, it is self-mutilation to a certain degree. And, dude, I've got scars on my forehead like a pro wrestler. I've got scars on my back from back surgery. I've had a hernia. I've got fucking knee surgery. Dude, you know, I have destroyed this fucking body so much. So I would have to say that one tattoo across my fucking gut is uh, probably the most telling scar that I have because it's so fucking ironic and, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you could have anything uh, you want to say to the Seattle audience, you think Down will be back anytime soon? I would hope Down is back. We got the new record coming out, and I would say middle, fall, late summer, something like that. Sweet. Because it, it is 
fucking done. You know, I, mm-hmm. I think right now we're waiting on Pepper to shore up on the uh, artwork and whatnot. But as far as like the recording and the mastering and all that shit, the motherfucker is done as of last week. So it should be, you know, ASAP, man. So, I mean, if you want to start holding your breath, you could because the motherfucker is coming out. And, I, you know, as far as us playing Seattle, I don't see why we wouldn't.